In our previous video, we took a look at the 5 liter tune port small block Chevy. Now let's take a look at its Ford counterpart. Of course, I'm talking about the 5 liter Mustang. In this video, we're going to talk about the fabulous 5 liter Mustang. Now, obviously, I'm a fan. I mean, I still own one. I bought my new back in November of 1987. It was a 5 liter LX, 5 speed car, you know, the notchback, the one that you want, the cool one. I didn't even know back then. I was already cool. Actually, I bought it to go showroom stock racing. And <laughs> unfortunately for me, I bought it before GM introduced the 1LE Camaro that kind of came and cleaned house. I mean, that was a really good package. Unfortunately for me, the Mustang, although it went very well and ran good, I loved it, it's a great car, but I went through brakes <laughs> every race. I mean, I went through pads and rotors. A lot of times I had to drive home. I remember driving actually to the races because I didn't have a trailer or anything. So I'd drive the car to the race and I would come back. And a lot of times I would drive home with a pair of ice grips on both of the front brake lines and drive home on the rear brakes because I had totally just destroyed the front brakes. Not safe and don't ever do that. <laughs> but that's the way I got home a lot of times. Anyway, this is not really about the cars, although they're, they're kind of equal. I mean, before I bought the Mustang, I looked at the Camaro too, because the Camaro is a great car. I mean, one's a Ford, one's a Chevy, but they both kind of do the same thing. And if you ever see any road tests or comparisons, they're pretty equal in terms of power and handling and braking and all that stuff. One's a Ford, one's a Chevy, and I like them both. I'm actually not a Ford guy, and I'm actually not a Chevy guy, or a Dodge guy, or an import guy, or a, a domestic guy. I'm, I'm more of an engine guy, which is why I do all the dyno testing, and I love it. But let's talk about the 302 Ford 5 liter motor, we can compare it to the 305 in the video that we did previously. If you haven't taken a look at that, check it out. The video is right here. Also, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, help me out. I know a lot of you guys are not staying to the end of the video, and I always tell you to do it at the end. I'm doing that at the beginning. Again, make, make sure, like, share, subscribe, comment, tell your friends. Let's get this thing going. So, let's talk about some myths that I want to dispel between the 305 and the 302. So, the 305 is Chevy's version of that 5 liter motor that they used in the IROC and the TunePort deal. And Ford is the HO302. Now the big difference is the bore and stroke. The Ford has a bigger bore and a shorter stroke. 4 inch bore, 3 inch stroke. The Chevy uses a longer stroke and a smaller bore. But here's where uh, a lot of guys think that this is a big problem or a big difference in the power output. Because one uses more stroke and less bore, does it mean that the power curve is going to change necessarily? Now, we've done lots and lots of testing of the effect of bore and stroke. The reality is that the big thing, the big thing that determines what's going to make power is displacement, almost no matter how you get it. Now, so if you have two combinations that have exactly the same cylinder heads and exactly the same camshaft and intake and headers and all that, and you just change the bore and stroke without changing the compression and change nothing else, if the displacement is the same, the power output is going to be all but identical. Here's where that can change. And it can change if we go up in power output and up in RPM and up in the necessary head flow because that's where a big bore comes into play. If you have a big bore, you can put a bigger cylinder head, bigger valves, more flow, more power. And that's one of the limitations of the 305 Chevy. It makes good power, as we've shown. If you take a look at the last video, it makes good power, and it makes comparable power, and it always has compared to the 5-liter Mustang. Where it's limited is the small bore limits the available cylinder head flow, and it, avail and it also limits the available number of cylinder heads that are, avail that are available for that small bore combination. There are a ton of cylinder heads, obviously, for your traditional small block Chevy, your traditional 4-inch bore small block Chevy like a 350. But for the small bore 305, there are only a select few number of cylinder heads available as an upgrade for that small bore. And lucky for us, back in our video, we chose the trick flow head, which in my opinion is probably the best head for that combination. It works really well for that small bore 305. The problem is that ultimately that small bore can limit flow and limit power. Now that doesn't happen in the power ranges that we're talking about here. I mean, we were less than 400 horsepower on the 305, and we're gonna be in that range, let's say, on this 302. The nice thing about the 302 is the four inch bore allows us to put any of 
20 or 30 different available cylinder heads on this because it's something that it shares with the larger 351 um, and a lot of stroker variants of both of these combinations. So there are lots of cylinder heads available for the 302 and very few available for the 305, which I'm sure guys are going to scream about when, that, when I tell you about what combinations I put together for the 302. They're going to say, ah, you're just a Ford guy, you cheated. The reality is I'm not a Ford guy, I'm not a Chevy guy, I'm just a dyno guy. And we were trying to do, we were trying to maximize the combinations of each one of these respective, of each one of these respective motors, but the availability on the Ford was just better. And that's unusual for Ford. Anybody that goes back before this knows that small block Chevy has always been the dollar, dollar, darling of the industry. And Ford kind of had to make do. I mean, when I was first entering the Ford market, the hot setup was to get a set of 69 351 Windsor castings, iron castings, and port those and put those on your five liter. So this was before any of the aluminum heads ever came out. We had nothing and Chevy had everything. Then it turned around after Ford introduced that five liter. Let's check out some more information and then get to those results. Here's the plan for our five liter Ford. We're gonna do the same thing we did with our five liter 305 tune port Chevy. We're gonna run the motor stock up on the dyno with long tube headers and optimized tune. Then we'll install some performance modifications, cylinder heads, camshaft, intake manifold, still NA. Then we'll install the Torque Storm Supercharger. Find out how all this combination does under boost just like with the Chevy. The only difference is our Ford actually came from a wrecking yard. It wasn't a factory fresh time capsule performance machine. It was just some junkyard motor that we had, but don't worry. They all do about the same thing. And I've run a ton of these from the wrecking yard. They all make this kind of power. So I don't think there's any advantage from the Chevy being basically brand new. So let's find out how our Ford does NA with the modifications, then under boost. Just like with our 305 Chevy tune port motor, we ran our five liter Mustang engine in bone stock trim. And by that, I mean it wasn't really bone stock. <laughs> it had inch and three quarter long tube hooker headers on it and an open exhaust. It also had no accessories. We just used a Mazira electric water pump, an open throttle body, so no air intake, no mass air meter. And obviously it was an optimized tune. Now with this one, we ran a Holley HP management system, just like with the Chevy. So it had the right timing and the right air fuel to maximize the power output. So equipped like that, this was our junkyard five liter. It produced 261 horsepower and 321 foot pounds of torque. And in case you were wondering, we can compare that to our bone stock run in the same condition headers and stuff with the, uh, this was our 305 tune port Chevy. The Chevy actually made a little bit more power through the middle part of the curve. And, you know, it was brand new. <laughs> it's never been run. So maybe it was a little stronger. Maybe the, I haven't ever compared them directly, <coughs> excuse me, before that. So maybe the 305 is because of the cylinder head, the camshaft, the tune port runner combination. Maybe it does indeed make more power. They're kind of rated at the same. Um, you know, one was 230, at least in the, in the, last days of the tune port and the five liter Mustang was rated at 225. So maybe the tune port in this configuration makes a little bit more, but here's what happened when we ran them stock. And here's the comparison. Now let's take a look and see what happened after we add the modifications to our five liter Ford. After running our five liter Ford in stock trim, making 200 and whopping 261 horsepower, we made some modifications to it. Just like with the five liter tune port Chevy, we put different heads, cam and intake on it. And in this case, we installed one of my favorite cams, although this particular one came from, came from TrickFlow, but it's basically a version of the camshaft that I like. Take a look at the, power output first here. These are our power gains. And equipped with a new heads cam and intake, the power output jumped to 408 horsepower and nearly touched 400 foot pounds of torque, 397, yeah, 397 foot pounds. 
And what we did to achieve this is we installed new cylinder heads. First thing we do is put the camshaft in. And as I said, that was this was came from TrickFlow. And it's a 540, 560 lift cam, 224, 232 at 50, and 112 degree load separation angle. And this is a variation of the comp and the crane version of that cam that I that I've run that I ran on my Mustang for about 80, 85,000 miles, and it works great. It's a good all-around cam. It's worked for a lot of stuff. I, I ran NA and turbo and blowers and nitrous and stuff on it. That cam's always worked pretty well. Now, the trick flow combination included that cam and a cylinder head upgrade and an intake upgrade. Now, the intake manifold was simple enough. That was their street heat, their long runner EFI manifold, and we combined that with a 70 millimeter AccuFab throttle body. In truth, this thing would make more power if it had a bigger throttle opening. That 70 millimeter throttle body at this 400 horsepower level is probably a little restrictive. But what really helped this thing make power was our head choice. Now, there's a ton of head choices for the 5 liter Ford, unlike that 305 Chevy. The heads that we chose were from, from TFS, and they were small, they were 170 cc's, but they were the 11R head, which is a CNC version of, uh, kind of a CNC version of, let's say, their, their uh, trick flow twisted wedge head, and it, it's a really good head. I really like this um, 11R head. It, it almost looks like a billet head on the outside. It's pretty awesome. But they work really well, and it allowed our 302 combination to make a good bit more power than that 305 Chevy. And the 305 Chevy also had the trick flow head on it. It had that Super 23 head on it, but it was not CNC ported. It was as cast. And again, I think that that Chevy is probably just limited by um, its bore size and the head that you can put on it. So this head combination on our trick flow... Uh, equipped 302 Ford worked very well. Power output jump from 261 all the way up to 408. Torque was way up and as you can see even down here at, I think we started this run at 3200 RPM and torque was already up by what is that from 320 to 361 so it was up already up by 40 foot pounds of torque there. So basically this combination kind of helped everywhere. It, it, it did a good job. Now this was a good combination and what I liked is we were able to rev this thing out near 6500 RPM which would come in handy once we installed the centrifugal supercharger. So let's take a look at it, see what happened when we installed that torque starter. Our final test was to add boost to this combination. So we had our stock tuned port motor, 260 horsepower. And then we added our NA modifications, push that over 400. And here's what happened when we installed the Torque Storm Supercharger. Power jumped up quite a bit, 600 and 38 horsepower at 6,400 RPM. Peak torque was 545 foot-pounds of torque. And just like I did with the video on the tune port Chevy, I'll go ahead and post the boost curves up here. Not boost curve, but I'll, I'll show you what the starting boost was down at 3,200 and then what the ending boost was out at 6,400. Because a centrifugal supercharger provides a rising boost curve. So the boost will go up with RPM, which is kind of in typical fashion. But this combination worked good. Um, like I said, I like the fact that we were making peak power and continued to make peak power out towards 6,500 RPM on this 302. And that would be even more pronounced if we had a different intake manifold on there. That long runner trick flow intake works really good and had a good torque curve. But if we shorten that thing up a bit or put a different style intake manifold on there, we could rev this thing farther and probably make more peak power. Although again, as always happens with that kind of intake choice, we would trade power elsewhere. But this is how well our combination worked. This combination actually made a little bit more power than the, the Chevy version did with the same blower and stuff. But I think we're really kind of splitting hairs there. I think that that's probably from the fact that we had a better cylinder head choice and we had a little bit more camshaft in the 302 than the 305. 
I know guys are gonna say, ah, oh, it's because of the bore and it's the stroke and you'll get to argue about all of that stuff that you want. But the reality is we just had a better combination on the 302 than we did on the 305. I think we could get more power from the 305 with more camshaft. And if we did some porting on those trick flow heads on the 305, we definitely can get that power up without any problem. And then the boosted power obviously would be up as well. So there you have it. Whether you got a 305 Chevy or a 302 Ford, they both make good power. They both easily went over 600 horsepower, which is an awful lot. And it was even more back in the day. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did you think about our comparison between the five liter Chevy and the five liter Ford? Any surprises? Actually, as I said, the displacement is the big thing. If you've got a five liter and you perform modifications on it, it's gonna make some power. Now our Ford did a little better than the Chevy, but that's to be expected. I mean, we did have a little bit more camshaft in it and definitely better cylinder heads, but that's a limitation imposed by the Chevy itself. I mean, it has a small bore and that's something that 305 owners have to deal with. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Again, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Just like I told you before, I'll keep testing.